Hi, welcome. My name is Devin Knight, and I'm the director of training here at Pragmatic Works. In this short five minutes to wow video, I want to teach you a cool trick that you can use on your reports to always return back the current month inside of your dashboards and your reports. This is all through Power BI, where you're going to learn a little bit of DAX that can automatically return back the current month and be dynamic. So each time you refresh your report, it'll always return back the current month. And it's basically going to be a nice little flag, a one or a zero. And the cool thing about this, as opposed to some other methods, is you can then use this new field that we're going to create throughout the rest of your report. All right, so let's take a look at how we can design this. All right, so I'm in the Power BI desktop, and I've already imported a data set. It has some sales data in it, and as you look at the data set here, you can see that I have a row for each day brought in. I can see the quantity sold and the sales amount. And what I'd like to do is I want to be able to bring this into my reports and see different elements of what's happening inside of my data sets. And ultimately, what I'd like to do is build out a sales dashboard that shows the current month. So whenever someone goes to open up the report, it always shows the current month, and they can be able to see the sales that occurred in that current month. Let me really show you the benefit of doing something like this. There is a nice custom visual out in the Power BI custom visual gallery, which allows you to actually show a calendar and a calendar showing an element or a metric on each month. And so I can bring in something like this just to give you an idea of the benefit of creating this calculation. And you can see we create this nice calendar here, and I can bump up the label so you can actually see the values a little bit. And we can do something like add in some data colors if we wanted to, just to really kind of spice it up a little bit. Uh, let's put in some green here and maybe some uh, red and some yellow as well. And so we can see that we're really kind of pulling together a nice little report. The problem, however, is that you can see with this visual, and this happens with other visuals as well, is it's automatically showing the first set of values in here. It's showing January 2017 as our first value that we can see here. And actually, it's showing some incorrect data because of that, where it's rolling everything up into that one particular month. And so what we'd like to do is I want to have some way to be able to see the current month return back. Now, with inside of the Power BI desktop, there's two ways you can do this natively. I can use a slicer, and I can bring into that slicer the date, and I can switch this to something called a relative slicer, relative date slicer, and I can tell it I only want to return back this month. And you can see here it returns back this month. My current month is January. That's one way you can do that. You can solve the problem this way. The downside of this is you then have the slicer here on the, the visual, on the report, and somebody can come in and make changes to it. So that's one downside of using the slicer method. Another method of doing this built into the Power BI desktop is I can actually select and create a filter. Let's say, for example, on the page, the page that we're looking at, I can come and drag the page level filters here and bring date down to the page level filters. And then I can do something like change this to an advanced, or I should say a relative date filtering here. And when I do that, I can tell it that I want to filter based on this month. This basically does the same thing. Once I hit Apply Filter, you can see it does the same thing that we had earlier, but it's now placed into the filter section. It's a little bit more hidden, so someone may not be able to discover and make changes to that. So that's one other way you can do this. Now, the problem with these two methods is if you really want to reference this month in other places, say, for example, you want to build calculations based off of this month, or you want to reference this month calculation in other parts of your report, this is really kind of limiting because it's kind of a natural filter that's within inside the Power BI desktop. So what you may want to do is actually create a new calculation that returns back a flag. Uh, this month, if maybe if it is the current month, and return back a one. Or if it's not the current month, return back a zero. And so what you can do is you can write your own little DAC statement. So let me remove this filter so we can test this out that will allow you to return back a flag. One for yes, it is this month, and a zero for no, it's not this month. And it's a little bit of a DAX statement. So if we want to create a DAX query or a DAX column in this case, we're going to create a calculated column, which you can find under the modeling ribbon here. And you'll select new column. When you select new column, you can paste in the, uh, this is really some, some uh, results that I've already written out. And you can pause the video and look at this closer if you'd like to. But basically, I'm saying, does the date inside my table match the current year? And does the date inside my table match the current month? And if it does, return back a one. If it doesn't, return back a zero. Now, there's lots of different ways you can write this. This is just one example. But if I hit Enter on this, it's going to create a new column in here called Current Month. And if I go look at my data set, you can see now this new column exists here. It's a bunch of zeros until you get down to the current month, which for me, as the moment I'm recording this, is July. And I can see a bunch of ones that show up next to July. Now, what I can do back over in the report side is I can bring that current month filter, our current month field down to my page level filters, just like we did earlier. And I can tell it that I want to apply it and do a basic filter. And I want to return back everything where the value is one. And if I select that, you're going to see it return back and show this report filtered down to only show the current month. 
Now again, this is very similar to what we did just a moment ago, but the difference is I can now use this field in other places. So anywhere else my heart desires that I want to actually filter to the current month, I now have a field to do it, and I can interact with it, and I can create other DAX expressions that leverage this field now. So there's a lot of benefits of creating this field on your own because you might be able to use it in other places, and you likely may want to use it in other places to create other statements and other if statements, perhaps, if it, you say, if it is the current month, then do this calculation. If it's not the current month, do something else. And so this gives you the ability to do that in a nice, simple little calculation. Again, you can pause the video and look at the calculation up here. It's not terribly difficult, but it's comparing today's date to the dates inside your data set. All right, so that's it for this one. Let me flip over here and do a quick review of what we talked about. All right, so in this video, you learned a little bit about the problem of wanting to return back the current date inside of a report. And always filter to the current report, the current month in your report, I should say. We then showed you a design where you can actually create a filter, whether it be through a, a slicer or a filter inside your report. Uh, but we talked about how you may have some instances where you really want an extra field that returns the current month. And so we showed you a DAX query that can do that for you. And then you can use that in that anytime you refresh your data set, it's going to refresh that DAX query as well. We then showed you how you could actually imp implement a filter on your report using that field so that you can automatically filter anything that shows up in your report based on that one or zero that we had inside of our data set. All right, well, I want to also remind you here that because you've watched this video, you're entitled to 10% off any of our training packs at Pragmatic Works. If you go to pragmaticworks.com, select the training pack that you'd be interested in, and when at checkout, use the promo code POWERBIWOW, and that gives you automatically 10% off any of the packs that are available out there. So take a look at that. Again, that's at pragmaticworks.com. You can also sign up for a free trial of our training. We have 30 plus training courses out there, many of them around Power BI and other business intelligence tools. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and take care. We'll talk to you next time.